are right in the midst of graphs and visualizations that we use to show uncertainty or to show the distribution in our data. And we started off with histograms and now we're getting into some other chart types, some of which we are going to show all of our data or specific points in our data and others which we are gonna show specific measures of dispersion, percentiles, medians, means, maybe even specific outliers. And on today's episode of the video series, I've invited my Urban Institute colleague, Alice Fang, to talk about the box and whisker plot. The box and whisker plot is sort of one of those traditional standard chart types that you can use to show specific values out of your data so that you can give your reader or your user a sense of the distribution of your data. So I'm gonna hand it over to Alice so you can learn more about the box and whisker chart. Thanks for having me, John. Box and whisker plots, or box plots, are a great way to visually summarize the distribution of your data. They can be used to answer questions such as, what is the range of my data? How much variability is there? Is the distribution of the data symmetric or skewed? Box and whisker plots start with what's known as the five number summary, the maximum or the largest value in your data set, the third quartile, also known as the 75th percentile, the median or the 50th percentile, the first quartile or the 25th percentile, and the minimum or the smallest value in your data set. To create a box plot, we first draw a line at the median. This is the value that half of your data points are less than and half are greater than. We then draw two more lines, one at the first quartile and one at the third quartile. Next, we connect these lines with the median to form the box portion of the box plot. The box shows what is called the interquartile range, or the distance between the first and third quartiles. Finally, we draw one line from the first quartile to the minimum, and another line from the third quartile to the maximum point. These are the whiskers. Now, sometimes you'll see box and whisker plots that look like the one on the right, where there are some points above or below the whiskers. This happens when you have values that lie outside 1.5 times the interquartile range from either end of the box. These points can be considered outliers. Now, like I said, box and whisker plots can be used to get a sense of the distribution of your data. Of course, nowadays, thanks to computers, there are other richer ways to visualize distributions that offer more detail, such as histograms, density plots, violin plots, and bean plots. But one of the really cool things about box and whisker plots is how easily they can be drawn by hand, a legacy of how long they've been around for. The basic concept of the box plot has been around since as early as the 1950s. The version we walked through here was formalized by American mathematician, John Tukey in 1970 as a tool for exploring your data. Here is one of the earliest examples of a box plot from the textbook, Exploratory Data Analysis by Tukey, which was published in 1977. On the left is a box plot showing the distribution of the highest points of all 50 states. On the right is a box plot of the heights of 219 volcanoes. From this, we can see that Alaska is the tallest state while Florida is the shortest and that the middle 25 states range in height from around 2,000 to 11,000 feet. We can also see that there's a wider range in the heights of the volcanoes than states, but that the tallest ones are just slightly shorter than the highest point in Alaska. Finally, one last thing I think is worth noting here is the hand-drawn nature of these two plots. 50 years later, box and whisker plots remain one of the most popular and widely used statistical graphs. I think some of the reasons why they've been around for this long are that they're easy to make and present a lot of information in a really clean and elegant form. Box plots continue to be a powerful and useful tool and one you should keep in mind when exploring your data. And thanks to Alice for that great review of the box and whisker plot or the box plot. I love that she brought in the original graph from John Tukey. Uh, I'm actually going to have that graph in my forthcoming book. It's in the section on the box and whisker plot. So I hope now you understand how it's used, what goes into it, and where you can, how you can employ it in your own data, in your own data visualizations. So come back tomorrow so you can learn some more about how to plot and visualize uncertainty and distributions in your data.